All right, so we continue our discussion with the explanation of the Maxwell equation. And in that category, we are here to explain the fourth equation or the final equation. This is the fourth equation we'll see in this module, or we'll see the final equation that uh, is a part of Maxwell's equation. And with that, we'll uh, end this module on the Maxwell equation. So the fourth equation is basically starts with the ampere circuital law. So what this uh, law says, let's understand, you have this current can carrying conductor and the uh, static current is I, which is flowing through this conductor. Okay, and the direction of shows, arrow shows, arrow shows the direction of the current I. So due to this action, there is a production of the magnetic field surrounding that conductor. So indicated by these red lines. So you see these circular lines that indicates the magnetic field is produced when the steady current is passed through a piece of conductor. So we can explain this with the right hand rule where our thumb indicates in the upward direction the direction of current and the rest of the fingers around this conductor circulating this conductor indicates the magnetic field vector b so we have explained in the previous module uh, this law uh, with the right hand rule again in this picture you see the direction of the current is indicated by the arrow and the magnetic field due to uh, due to this current that gets produced is indicated by the arrow direction and it is surrounding this conductor and circling this conduction and this picture shows the right hand rule thumb indicates the direction of the current and the rest of the fingers surrounding this conductor indicates the direction of the magnetic field which is in the perpendicular to the plane of the current, okay? So ampere circuital law, that's why we call it as ampere circuital law. It describes first the relationship between electric current and the magnetic field. And this law holds true only for the steady currents. And in the situation where electric fields are not changing with the time. So there is a, let's say you have a circuit and you have a voltage applied to that circuit due to which then there is an electric field. And if that voltage is constant, it means the electric field lines will be constant. The current produced due to applied voltage will be constant. So in that case, this law holds true. How to express this law in the mathematical form? So Ampere circuital law in integral form, there are two forms like differential and the integral. So the first form of this law is the integral form. So let us have a look at this equation. So this equation tells us that we, have, we are integrating and this circle indicates the loop or the wire loop over which the magnetic field is produced and we have to integrate or add up that magnetic field components. So B dot DL, so there is a dot product. So B dot DL, we just read it like B dot DL, that is a dot product of magnetic field vector B and DL is a small piece of length of uh, over the loop in which the magnetic field is produced. So you see, take a look at this picture, you have the current that is flowing through this piece of conductor and this is a DC current, no time varying component is involved and because of that, the magnetic field gets produced and over this loop, we are taking a small portion that is indicated by DL and we are integrating this uh, this circle, basically integrating over this circle, the strength of the magnetic field. And so this left hand side equation, when we integrate this magnetic field, that equates to the total current, which is flowing through that circuit. And it gets multiplied by this constant, which is the permeability of the free space that relates the magnetic field to the current. So how to read this equation, integration of the line integral of magnetic field 
uh, that equals to total current multiplied by mu naught. So here the this symbol integration with the circle represents the closed line integral, which means we are integrating the magnetic field around the closed loop. B is the magnetic vector line at any point along the loop. So we are having we are having this loop. We are having this loop, and at any point we can get the magnitude of magnetic field that is B. DL is infinitesimal vector element along the loop. So around along this loop that we are integrating the magnetic field, you can just take a small vector that is length vector, we call it as a DL. Mu naught is the permeability of the free space, a constant that relates the magnetic field to the current. Okay, and I is the total current that passes through this loop. That's the total current that passes through this loop. So you see now we are able to understand the ampere circuital law in the integral form. Let's move to the next slide. So here again, we are having this equation. So this equation, how to read this? This equation states that the circulation of the magnetic field, you see the magnetic field is circulating around this loop, which is the left side, left hand uh, side of this equation around the closed loop. So again, this equation states that the circulation of the magnetic field around the closed loop is directly proportional to the total electric current passing through that loop, which is the right hand side of this equation. Okay, so this figure and this figure, they are same and we can indicate the direction of current and due to which the current magnetic field is produced. So we can also know the direction of the magnetic field. So just to summarize in terms of few sentences, the ampere circuital law tells us that the magnetic field lines encircle the current carrying wire. So just take a piece of wire, let the current flow through it, the magnetic field gets produced and those magnetic field lines will encircle this current carrying conductor right over here, right over here, okay? Second, the magnetic field lines lie in a perpendicular to the wire lie in a plane perpendicular to the wire. How to understand this? So the magnetic field lines got produced. So you see, so this is, let's say, X plane. This is your Y plane and this is your Z plane. So can you tell if the direction of the current is in the X plane or X direction or X axis, in which plane the magnetic field line got produced. It is in the Y plane or in the Y direction. And if it is to be a Z plane, then it will be out of these slides. When I'm teaching you, it will be out of this slide. So currently we'll see that X direction indicates or X plane indicates current. Y plane indicates the production of magnetic field lines and which is 90 degree, which is, which is at the 90 degree angle. Okay, so what if if we reverse the direction of the current through this conductor? Conductor. So the magnetic field lines, which are shown by the red arrow like this, would be now going in the reverse direction. So if you have a current carrying conductor and the current flow is in this direction, so the magnetic field lines would be in this direction. If you have a current carrying conductor and the current flows in this direction, and the magnetic field lines would be in this direction. In this direction. So it's very simple. And the strength of the magnetic field, you see this magnetic field lines getting produced, the strength of the magnetic field, that would be proportional to the magnitude of the current. More the current, more the magnetic flux will be generated. And the strength of the magnetic field at any point Let's say we are at this point, we are at this point, we are at this point. So as you go move away from the conductor, the strength of the magnetic field, field will go down. 
here at this point the strength of magnetic field be higher here at this point the strength of the magnetic field will be lower now what maxwell did maxwell just modified or improved the ampere's law so that's why the final and the fourth law is in combination called as ampere's maxwell law so it's basically an extension of ampere's circuital law that we have just seen and the maxwell's contribution is that it describes the changing electric field that is changing electric field not the steady electric field and it says that the changing electric field produces the magnetic field earlier we saw that the static electric field static electric field produces magnetic field and that was the ampere circuital law in the previous slide but now this law says a changing electric field produces a magnetic field so you see that's why we call it as ampere's maxwell law so what will this law tells us it will tells us tell us the relationship between electric current the changing electric field and the changing magnetic field they will produce so you have the current flowing through the conductor but which is time varying and because of that you have a changing electric field and because of that you have a changing magnetic field we'll see how so let's say you have this solenoid indicated by the gray wire this is the solenoid solenoid that's the piece of conductor and the current flows through this uh, solenoid as shown over by the arrow. So incoming current is indicated here and the outgoing current is indicated here. So you have the current flowing through this and let's say you have the voltage applied across this conductor. So because of that, you have this current coming in and the current going out like this. So what happens? If you have the alternating voltage applied to this solenoid, so it means this voltage is alternating in nature, that is time varying. Because of that, the time varying current will be flowing through this piece of conductor. And because of that, the blue line indicates, this blue line indicates there will be a production of the magnetic field. So the magnetic field vector or magnetic flux that will be produced and if we take this dotted area that dotted portion right over here like right over here that is our integral path for ampere's law to calculate to magnetic field to calculate the magnetic field we'll integrate over this path okay so that is nothing but our equation. So we are integrating the magnetic field over the line integral over the closed loop or closed path and dl is the small vector length and that is equal to mu naught times the total current which is what we have seen earlier in the ampere circuital law. Remember this equation was b dot dl equals to mu naught times r. That is ampere circuital's law. And now we'll see 